Hallelujah. Come on, continue to worship Him. Hallelujah. Are you thankful to be here tonight? Oh, thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity, Lord God, to be in your presence, to be in a place where I can freely worship you, to hear the music, Lord God, songs of worship and praise. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What an awesome, awesome opportunity it is today. I'm thankful. I mean, I know that we're not so narrow-minded and every individual day is like, ooh, it's a special day. But reality is, every day that I'm alive gives me more opportunity not only to serve the Lord, but get things right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. I'm so thankful. It's good to have all of you here. And uh, it's Wednesday night, uh, second Wednesday night of the summer, and I'm thankful that uh, you have joined us. It's uh, to me. I, I love Bible study. I love Wednesday night Bible study. I love Wednesday night service, if you will, and uh, want to want to uh, get into that in a minute. Before we do, I want to give you some announcements. Uh, first of all, just just know, and I forgot to pull up. Let me do this real quick. I've got it somewhere here. I totally hold my grandbaby over there and forget my forget my lose my brain. How's that? But uh, anyway. I uh, just want to say that don't forget we got a lot of people traveling a lot of people going places doing things uh, and we want to to uh, bless them amen let them know that it's good uh, yeah I've, I actually have gotten oh my goodness dozens and dozens of pictures from people that are working youth camps and uh, Chloe is in uh, uh, not not Haiti but the other one Dominican Republic and uh, of course, I've talked to our missionaries, and it's just it's beautiful. And I appreciate uh, all these uh, summer small groups. We're asking you to join us. It's uh, it's um, one week or, or three three weeks in a row, three times. But you can take one of them if you want. Uh, it's being advertised on Group Me, and if you're not on Group Me, you need to get on there. Uh, but it's a, it's a big blessing. Next, uh, this coming Sunday is Father's Day, which is really cool. And uh, then uh, I'm, I'm excited about that. And then, of course, we have uh, coming up on August the 19th, we have safe churches here in our church. We're hosting it and uh, we, we want people to um, attend, but we're also needing people to help work. And we're going to be getting with different people throughout the church just to do certain things. Um, it, it, it is a charging. It is a conference that we're charging people to come to. Um, we have had really good response from our community. I've had our insurance agent that covers our church. I talked to him yesterday, and um, he's like, so tell me what I was going on. So I sent him the website and everything before. He goes, man, this is awesome. He said, my boss really was very interested in this. I'm going to give him all the information. But he, they, they, um, they have over 4,000 churches nationwide that they insure. And he said, this is one of his passions. And so I, I was excited. And then, of course, uh, I, would, I, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you, uh, Brian PD, that we talked to them. And uh, I've got a phone call to talk to one of their detectives tomorrow. They're going to be involved. We've got attorneys coming. We've got, uh, oh, my goodness, forensic investigators coming. We've got, uh, yeah, all kinds of people coming. And the point of it is, is we, and I'm trying to help the church to understand what we're doing. It's not some blow off conference that we're hosting and we're going to get a lot of preaching. Sorry. I don't know if that goes together and I didn't mean to say it like that, but it's just not a preaching conference. Uh, we want to make our church and we have been doing this for years. We want to make our church safe for our children, safe for our people, safe for our teachers. And we want to give the community a good an understanding that we are doing our best and too often we see the news way too often we see the news and it's so so frustrating and you don't hear of anybody doing anything about it it's just all it's after the fact oops 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 if we got so many oops why don't we go ahead and try to fix some things so we're trying to set things up to where we can show others how we've done things and and, it, and there has been a couple of instances where what the way we've done things has protected the church protected your your church you didn't have to read about us in the newspaper and if we didn't do things the way we do you probably would have okay so that's that so i'm gonna i'm gonna um get the um ushers to come we're gonna give you an opportunity to give and um we just want to ask the lord to bless this 
Uh, Y'all come and uh, ask the Lord to bless this offering as you give. Lord, we pray that you would um, bless the offering. Use it for your glory. Use it, Lord, uh, to help us to reach more souls. Whatever, Whatever we do, Lord God, let it be that we do all things for your glory. We lift you up. We exalt you in our giving. We ask you, Lord, to bless those that give, those that sacrifice, those that sacrifice for the capital campaign that we're putting on right now. I pray that you would bless them. We give you all glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. While you're, while you're giving your uh, offering and your tithe, I want to let you know Sunday we, had a cap, we kicked off a capital campaign. And these are the paper forms, but you can go online and you can... Um, watch the the service from Sunday. There's several, in my mind, several remarkable statements made. <laughs> but uh, the main thing is uh, God needs us. We need God. We need God, right? But God needs us. It, it, we've got a partnership. We've got to, we've got to work together. So uh, if, you did, if you want to do a pledge, please, please watch online. If you do anything and you please watch last Sunday's service online and then uh, we want everybody in the church to commit to something the, the little widow woman she gave all but she gave it. Would, and I've got a couple of them in fact I, I, I know where they're at I think I know where they're at the, the widow's mite it's about that big a little copper coin and if you was to take its value it might be worth it wouldn't even be worth what we'd call a penny today uh, but it, it's, it's worth something because God knows what we can give and he blesses us based on that. So I uh, want to go to the Lord in prayer and I, I know that we have a few prayer requests. Nothing, thankfully, nothing super emergency or anything right now. I want to continue to pray for Sister Crenshaw. She did have a stroke. Her, her she pointed to it. I think it was her left leg <laughs> that she, she felt like was just very heavy. She couldn't move it. And, uh, and so she's taking therapy, but we want to continue to pray for her. Pray for Kimberly, her daughter. Pray for those that are traveling. Amen. And if you need prayer, you know, it's already been stated. And this, I've, I've actually said something about this about a year and a half or two ago. And Brother Ethan said it today over the pulpit. You know, it's supposed to be if we need prayer, we call for the elders of the church. It shouldn't be, please come. Please come. It's just, hey, I've got a need. I need to be prayed for. You should feel that liberty just about any time during the service. So let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask God to help us today in this Bible study as well. Lord, we praise you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for the opportunity to worship you together with like-minded people. Oh, I'm thankful, Lord, for your truth. I'm thankful, Lord, for your blessings. You're good. You're so good. You're so good. And I pray that you would touch these needs, Lord God. You see, Sister Crenshaw, you see all those that are traveling. You see, Sister Amanda, Lord God, I pray that you would touch her body. Lord, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to work, Lord God, where we cannot in every situation. Lord God, show us favor in the community. Show us favor, Lord God, as we walk through our world, Lord God. And bless us, Lord, as we do your work, your will, your way, Lord God, I pray. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you glad to be here tonight? Woo! Woo! Me too. God bless you. You may be seated. So first of all, I want to say that, uh, uh, well, let me get to my scripture because I, I have it out here. Luke 9 and 57. Luke 9 and 57. It says, um, and it came to pass as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So a certain man came up to him and says, hey, I'm going to follow you, Lord. Now, I'm thankful for uh, Daniel, well, for Daniel Lawrence last week, his teaching on evangelism. Uh, he, he used the word evangelist and the work of reaching others with the gospel. And what we need to understand is we're reaching others with the gospel for their sake. It's not like it's a competition with inside the church building. Hey, I won seven, I won three. No, we're, we're trying to help people. Amen. Amen. We, we, to be honest with you, if we can look at it like the hospitals for the sick, we need the sick to come here. We need people that are hurting and confused. So, but we, we don't need a platform as much as we need. I'm repeating some of the things he said. We don't need a platform as much as we need a willingness to, to love people and to see people in their pain. 
And again, repeating some of the things, his, his prayer, Lord, use me. Uh, show me somebody and give me the wisdom when you do, Lord God. And he identified a few, four points at the very end of his message that was very important about us doing evangelistic work or evangelism. Identify those that are hungry or need, need the truth or are or, or looking for the truth. Invest in them. Invite them into your home, into your life. And then increase them, bless them, and help them to see. And, and that's the way God works. Uh, letting people know, I've got some good news to bring. This is from his message. I've got some good news to bring. I've got some good news to bring to you today. Do you know that Jesus loves you? That's some good news. I don't know what you're dealing with, but God can help you. That's good news. You've got a friend in him. You've got a friend in this church. There's a lot of ways that we can proclaim this good news. Obviously, the, the main good news is that the Lord Jesus died for sinners just like us. Right. Amen. The Bible says if we, if we say we're not a sinner, we're a liar. And what's that make us? <laughs> a sinner. A <laughs> sinner. So we look at, we look at the, the various aspects of this, and, we, and I think that it wasn't mentioned by him, and I'm going to transition to my own thoughts, but it wasn't mentioned by him, but we need to recognize that being, being, salvation is not a, a diploma. Salvation is not a diploma. It's a birth certificate. It's, hey, now you're, now you're born or you're born again in the spirit. Now it's time to go on and grow. And so I want to take us from just evangelism to the next level, and that's from evangelism to discipleship. And that is uh, from an, using another eye. He said, identify, invest, invite, and increase. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use another eye, and it's instruct or disciple. Use discipleship, if you will. So tonight, though, I'm going to look at that in a different angle, if you will, for a few moments. I want to take us to a place where we understand what discipleship is all about. We should all be interested in discipleship. Right. It's something that is, that is imperative. But not just discipleship uh, in others, but discipleship discipling discipling ourselves now discipleship means to grow and develop and this isn't just as important like i said in others but i must see personally the importance of my growth and i'm going to help you understand uh in the in the present context i'm going to try to help you understand in the present context how important it is that we grow in truth that we grow in the spirit today we cannot, if, you, if you've ever been, and I heard it mentioned one time, and I'm trying to remember if I can say it right. If you've ever been closer to God than you are today, you're in trouble. You're backslidden. And that's very, very important that we recognize that. I personally can never go back. I can't afford to go back in our day, and I'll try to explain why I mean that in a minute. But we must understand there is a prerequisite for discipleship, for being a disciple. Okay, the parent must grow and be and be disciplined themselves before they can teach the children how to be disciplined. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, in our high speed world, it is not uncommon for us to see new technology, even daily. It is it is no surprise. In fact. Uh, uh, we were sitting in the coffee shop. Like we got, I get here at like six o'clock because I like open the doors and I just can't wait for everybody to show up. All that kind of stuff. I'm just like, ooh, I can't wait for the button to get here. You know, I can't wait for this one to get here. I'm just thinking a lot. But anyway, but but I, I'm sitting there and we were talking, and technology is moving so fast. We're not listen, church. We're not living in 1840. We're living in a day and an age where technology is advancing daily. I heard today that Paul McCartney who was one of the Beatles, I think he's the only one still alive, they have decided to, to uh, release another album with new songs using all of the Beatles. All of them are dead but one. Think about that. They're going to use AI. They're going to use AI to produce songs. It's crazy. It's, it's just mind-boggling. There was another, another, uh, the, 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 Apple released just a few days ago, $3,600 or whatever it is, where it, it's, it's like an Oculus, but it's even a step farther, and it's, and it's coming and going and coming and going, and this technology, and, 
And I'm telling you, they don't just do a little tweak. We get a, I get, I don't know if you, but I get a little update almost every day. It seems like get an update your phone, update your iPad, whatever it is. And but new technology is happening so quickly that it's changing the way the world around us. And and it's truly it's setting us up uh, for an for an, for an end time setting, if you will. Right. So recent experience tells us if we aren't growing, if we aren't growing. As technology advances, we will find ourselves behind pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, Windows 98. I don't even think you can turn a computer on with it on, I- anymore. Uh, you can? <laughs> you can. A miracle. Uh, they, tell me that, they tell me that the technology that was around it, and I can't remember what year it was. I, I forget now. But it was like 1980. It, it took more memory to turn your cell phone on now that it took a computer to turn in, in 30 years ago, 40 years ago. And it's because technology. So like when I was a kid, and I use this little example. When I was a kid, I think it was in ninth grade, I took typing. Anybody, anybody take typing? Well, the next year they turned it, changed it to keyboarding. And the next year, it wasn't keyboarding, it was computing. It was in 1983 or 84. But things have changed. It was on a yearly basis. But now it's, it's progressing so fastly. And if you, don't, if you don't maintain that growth in the technology, you lose it. You're, gonna, you're not going to be the person. You can't go to school and say, well, I'm fixed that. I'm a computer engineer for the rest of my life. I never have to grow anymore. Right? Well, <laughs> that's, that's wrong. That's exactly right. It's wrong. A child that doesn't mentally, I'm, I'm trying to challenge our, logically, I'm trying to challenge us to understand how important it is for us to grow spiritually. Right. We must grow. A child that doesn't grow mentally or, or physically, we take them to the doctor. We say, something's wrong with my child. There's, it's not growing. Now, back in the day, they used to say, let me go ahead and take, while you're in here, let me go ahead and take your appendix and your tonsils and your adenoids and everything out. Now they realize, you know, hey, something that's not the way we do things. Now they're looking at it going, okay, wait a second. What about the diet? What kind of, what kind of diet is this child getting? And on and on and on. And they do some research before they just start chopping. You know what I'm saying? They didn't know that back when I was a kid. I mean, I walked in with pneumonia and they said, well, why are you in here? Let's go ahead and take your tonsils out. And, you know, it's it, crazy. But we need to step back and see the big picture of discipleship and discipling others. The macro view, as I've said before, what's going on? How are things going in your life? When we do that exercise with our lives and with the world, we find out that almost all of the issues that we are dealing with today, and I I want you to see a big picture. I know that we want to call everybody idiots. That's my go-to word. Uh, Anybody with me? Anybody? Oh, Oh, okay, I got a few. I'm like, what an idiot. They're, they're, trying, they're, a, they're a man saying, they're a, what an idiot. You know, that's what I'm thinking. But the reality is all these things that are going on around us, all of them are a result of a world that has outgrown God. We've got new technology. We've got, we're civilized. We've got society. We've got access to anything we want. We've got all this stuff. Why do we need God? And so we slowly, if we're not growing... We're slowly giving up things of God in favor of things of the world. That's what we call backsliding. We are slowly, and I'm telling you, I say this, and I I don't expect everybody to be on the same page all the time, but each individual one of us must get a grip, must get an understanding. I am not happy with the disciple maker I'm supposed to be. I'm not happy being the man I am right now. You see what I'm saying? It can't be me beating everybody over the head all the time saying, you need to grow up. You need to grow up. No parent does that. My, my sister, when I was a kid, used to grab my hair and grow, grow. She thought it was funny because I'm short. It didn't work. I'm still short. Of course, I love my sister. We just uh, didn't see eye to eye. <laughs> Pun intended. I was short. But... Uh, uh, when I was a kid, you know, my dad used to say, you need to eat your greens. Well, I hated turnip greens. But I, I, now I wish I ate them, I guess. I, I love them now, but I don't know. The point is, the point is, we don't, we're not all at the same level. But you don't beat children over the head, forcing them to grow, 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 grow. You better grow. What are you doing not growing? This is a personal thing. If you want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you better get it in your heart and your mind. I won't 
to grow closer to the Lord. It's not complicated. And it's not, oftentimes it's not easy. Oftentimes it's something that, that's, that's difficult. The world, the world truly has, and, and I, I said this earlier, but they have outgrown God. The world doesn't, hasn't gotten enough, hasn't gotten enough in general. The world hasn't gotten enough of spirit and truth in many generations. Many generations. I, I, my mom uh, said something about 1963 today. And, I, and, of course, I know a little bit about history, and, and, and I, I, like, I like demographics and, and, and just studying history. And, and I'm like, man, there was hardly, I mean, there might have been another 10 years or 15 years that were like 1963 when it comes to America and growing up in that time period. There was, there's, the way it looks, there's never going to be another year like it. Why? Because there was prosperity everywhere. I mean, it was, it was, there was jobs everywhere. Job weight, wages was increasing. Technology was, it was all good technology. It was like the refrigerator and air conditioners and stuff like that. Good stuff. Everything was people, people for the most part, like 95% of them, had an ethical and moral standing that they, they knew that they had to be good. And, and so all that is gone. And now we are left with the, with the residue, if you will, of, of a world that says, I don't want more God. I want more technology. Think about think about this. I want you to. I'm trying to help us to use our logic. I don't want more God. I want more social media, whatever it may be. And I and I don't want to use things that that are mine. I'm just saying you use your own mind and you consider. You look at the things that are going on in our world and you're like something's not right. Let me tell you what happened. We outgrew God. Right. Right. I say we. I got to be careful. But anyway, we are growing ever closer though to a time. When now in the past, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to try to say all this in a, in the right sense. In the past, there was a time period to where uh, you didn't have to say to say for instance go to church, and everybody considered you know everybody was Christian just about okay. But there's coming a time to where the the distinction in our diet, our spiritual and 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 mental and and living diet, the things that we consume are going to distinguish us farther and farther apart from each other okay right now those of you that don't like to look you don't like to look different you like to like blend in or whatever and just kind of look and act and walk and talk and look every, everything like the world you're gonna have a problem come pretty pretty soon because the world is steadily and rapidly going away from God and if you want to be a disciple of God you're gonna have to take a stand and say wait a second I at, this is not pastor. This is not the church. This is me. I'm going to live for God, and I'm going to do it in a way that it, it's going to help me to stand out. Right. I'm going to stand out. Um, my, I, for some reason, I just come to mind. I was reminded a couple days ago. My wife and I were talking, you know, about about Daniel when when they said you can't pray, you cannot pray. Daniel stood out because he did pray. We have to have that mindset. Right. We, have, we have to have the mindset of the, of the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that said, you know what, throw me in, I might burn, but if I don't, I'm still not going to bow. Right. I'm not going to let my life outgrow God. I'm not going to get let things and to reverse that, to flip it around on its ear. I'm not going to let other things in my life become greater and more important than God. Amen. See? So... The, the diet of the world has, has created exactly what I was referring to. The diet of the world has created th these things that, and, and I'm, I've got a little short list, selfishness and greed and pride, perversion, uh, confusion, hate and anger. It, 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 we, we must be aware of these things and we must be faithful disciples of God and not, not drawing away to the left or the right, but we must realize, I've said this many times before and I would encourage you to understand this. If the Lord would have, and there was only 10 commandments, but if the Lord would have put 20 out there, one of those next 10 would have been, thou shalt know thyself. Yourself. What weakness are you constantly fighting? What weakness are you constantly 
what, 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 what the addiction or what fear or what, what greed or what, what lust or what pride or what, what, what area of life are you always having to struggle with? You should be able as an adult, and I'm, as, I know I'm talking to other young people here as well, but, but we as, as individuals, we should not have to be uh, beat over the head with get it right all the time. We should look in the mirror and say, oh, you dirty dog. <laughs> I know what your problem is. I know, I'm talking about looking in the mirror, right? Y'all with me? Amen. So consider these things. And, and Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Let's go back there for a minute, and I'm, I'll hurry. Luke 9, 57 says, says, It came to pass that as they went in a way, in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. Now, this is one of the scriptures, I'm just going to tell you this. This is one of those scriptures that, uh, it, and I, don't, I can't put my finger on it, but it was when I felt the call of God on my life. I think it might have been when I heard that scripture. I don't know, I don't know how it went, but I'm, I'm not even going to. But it, this next scripture, Jesus looked at him and said, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. Discipleship will cost you. If all you have gotten so far is blessings, and you haven't, it hasn't cost you anything? I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I think we, sometimes it costs us and we don't realize it because we've been doing it for so long. Sometimes we, we've given up friends and we, didn't, we forgot about it. We moved on. Sometimes we had to, But discipleship will cost you. You might not have a home. Are you going to be okay with that? Hmm. The next scripture says, and he said unto them, unto another, follow me. He invited him. But he said, Lord, allow me or suffer me first to go and bury my father. This is a, I mean, this is a big deal. I just buried my, my dad about two months ago. Let me go bury my dad. And Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. What's he talking about? The spiritually dead. Right. Listen, when the call of God, the, when, when you're a, when you're a a child of God, and you're said, and the Lord says, "Follow me." He's not. He, 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 don't look back. Don't let don't let distractions come. We must be immediate and prompt and looking forward into the kingdom, knowing. Now I know I'm. A, I'm, a, I'm. Maybe I'm. You think maybe I'm being a little excessive. I just tell. I'm telling you what what God is calling us to do and to be is maybe a little excessive. We've got to have. A mind that I want to be a disciple. And I will bring this in in a minute, but I'll go ahead and give you a teaser. Disciples are disciplined. Right. We have, to, we, we must be disciplined. We must individually discipline ourselves. Why do, we, why do we teach this, this principle of discipline in our children from the littlest of the... All, they start growing up, we're trying to teach them discipline. Why? Because we know that the lack of discipline, you're going to go out and do crazy dumb things and you're going to make huge mistakes because you operated off your emotions. That's right. It's a horrible recipe yes, for disaster. And sometimes we don't realize the disaster for 30 or 40 years. Oh, man. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. Come on. But you, you realize what I'm saying. We've got to be disciplined. The next passage, verse 64, 61 says, and, we must, and, and, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go bid farewell, which are at home. He's saying, I'm going to go to my home, visit my family, and I'll be right back. I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow you, but I'm going to go home. I'm going to take a course over here, and I'm, I'm going to meet, meet back up with you. And Jesus said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is, is fit. For the kingdom of God. Man, you don't even have a place. Ah, think with me. Think with me, church. You don't even, you're getting distracted, makes you lose your place in the kingdom. And, and what's crazy is I know people that, and I'm not talking about anybody in our church for sure, but that it's like out, in, out, in, out, in. <laughs> wow, I'm like, make up your mind. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to be a disciple maker. I'm going to be a disciple. 
And it means I'm going to have to be disciplined. I am going to have to lay down the law on myself. Temptation draws us away. Over the last 2,000 years, uh, temptation has been a part of life. It's just, I mean, there's no exception. It was, it was of, of course, uh, for the last 50 years or so, with all of our uh, awesome blessings, <laughs> the access to temptations has grown exponentially. It has grown exponentially. I, I remember, and many of you remember, if you wanted to do something, you had to sneak around. You wanted to go do something that was wrong, you had to, you had to, you had to sneaky, you know, everything was sneak, sneak, sneak. Yeah. Now you don't have to sneak do anything. Because yeah. it's already, it's already hidden. Yeah. It's crazy. Let no man say when he is tempted in James 1, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Thou shalt know thyself how disciplined are we how disciplined are we I'm not the most disciplined person in the world I'm not going to say I am I mean I could say I would I am but it probably wouldn't my wife wouldn't believe me <laughs> and God wouldn't believe me I don't know who is the most disciplined person in the world but I know this I better become more disciplined if I'm going to live for God, I better, I, better start, I, I better start disciplining my own life instead of having somebody else to discipline me all the time. Hey, for counsel, you know, my wife or somebody else, whoever would do that, you need to straighten up. Yeah. <laughs> my wife's laughing. <laughs> it says, scripture says, then when lust, okay, so lust, when it's conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Then I, this next scripture is just so blatant, so plain. Do not err. Quit straying all the time. You've got to realize that the Lord's not the one doing the tempting. It's you that's not disciplined yourself. Right. Amen. Oh, and I know the scripture, this little, this little sermonette message, whatever you want to call it, this teaching, is, it's harm, it hurts us. Because some of us, we, we want to blame the dog and the, the devils and everything else, you know. Remember that? The dog ate my homework. Devil, devil made me do it, whatever, all those things. It was my brother's fault. Blame somebody else, but not me. No, let me tell you something. Every individual in the world and in the church, everybody is going to have to stand up and look at themselves in the mirror and say, I have to be more disciplined. Now, in the world, they're doing it for, for physical, whatever, physique. They're doing it for other reasons. God help us. But we, we church, they're doing it, as my wife just said, they're doing it for self-gratification. But we, as the people of God, the ecclesia, we are the called out ones. We are not doing this just for ourselves. We're not, we're not doing anything really. And my, and I'm, this is my fault. I don't want to do anything for myself. I might have to eat. I might have to have some pleasure, some time off, some things this, here and there. But really my whole life encompasses what can I do to, to please God? And that's where we have to have the mind. Hebrews 10 and, um, 10 and 35, cast not away, therefore your confidence, which hath great rep recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. And, and verse 39, I'm going to read it in what is called the Woost, W-U-E-S-T uh, version. But as for us, we are not of the shrinking back kind of people who draw back to perdition, but of the believing kind who press on and believe to the end of the saving of our souls. We press on. We have to, but we have to do it with an understanding that I'm not who I need to be. I've got to do more. I've got to grow more. And it can't just be growing in knowledge and growing in, in technology and growing in friends and growing in you know, muscles, but it's got to be in growing in the Word and in the truth, in the Spirit of God. I've got to draw near to God. I need, I need more prayer, amen? I need more connection with God. I need more of the Word. Anybody with me? Amen. So what is the point of all this? We must show the world a better way. I'm talking about discipleship, evangelism and discipleship. We must show the world a better way. We must share, honestly, a purer, kinder way. We must share 
a purer way of living for and and not not and, and not addicted to everything, not in fear of everything that happens, not, not uh, uh, full of jealousy or greed. Those things are common in our world. We need to stand out for having a mind. That, scripture uses the word be sober-minded. I know what's going on, and I'm still not scared because I know who my Savior is. That's sober-minded. I see what's going on. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I know exactly what's going on. And I know exactly what's going on. And the Lord's coming back soon. And I'm excited. I want to, I want to have a, the mind of understanding. So in order for all that to happen, though, we must be consistent. And this is, and I, obviously I'm speaking the choir tonight. You all consistent people. you always at church. I'm not, I mean, I really am looking at people as always at church. So, I mean, I'm probably don't need to just you know, leap over this one and keep going. But we must be consistent. I'll just repeat it because I put it in my notes. We must be consistent. We must be consistent. I, you cannot witness to others if you are not consistent. Your witness is messed up. You must be consistent. You must be disciplined and you must be consistent. Consider some of the thoughts. And this is just some, just some random thoughts that I had. What is most important to you? Think about this. And you're, most of these questions are very easy to answer. What is most important to your family or your hobbies? Well, everybody was, oh, my, my family, duh. Okay, we're going to go back into a scripture in a minute, but I want you to think about this. What about your hobbies or a job? Well, that's an easy one, too. My job. I don't need a hobby, but I need a job, right? What about money or your family? Well, <laughs> I mean, it would be hard to live without my money, but I guess I, I need my family. So we go through this ration, rationale, and we try to, we try to distinct. Uh, distinguish between the things that we need. But the Lord, the Lord told those three people that wanted to follow him, those the, assuming men, he said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Follow me. Right. You, don't, you don't know where you're going to sleep tonight? No. I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on a mission. Well, then I'm not. <laughs> I know if I stay here, I got a bed. Select comfort bed at that. Might be 12, 14 years old, but it works. Better than nothing. You see what I'm saying? The, the logic began to kick in when they began to say, hey, you know what? The script, we, we use this term, freedom isn't free, is it? Freedom isn't free, and that's absolutely the truth. Freedom is not free. Right. We just celebrated Memorial Day about those that, that paid the ultimate price. But discipleship is not free either. Discipleship is not free. It's going to cost you. Evangelism is going to cost you. It's going to cost you something. And the first thing it's going to cost you, that you need to recognize it today, is I need to discipline myself in the ways of God. Now, anybody that started reading their Bible through this year and already a week or so behind, I'm with you. <laughs> I tried. I've been trying like crazy. But just one thing, I, I'm, I'm like a week behind. And I told my wife, man, this is crazy. I mean, every day the last, like, well, we had camp meeting all, you know, it's just crazy. We're like, it's crazy. I'm telling you, we're not perfect. No. We're not, we're not going to walk around saying, I'm more disciplined than you. Right? right. We're not going, no, that's not the way we act. Right. But because this is not about us measuring ourselves by ourselves. This is about our measuring ourselves by our own ability in the eyes of God. We've got to be more disciplined, personally disciplined. So I'll hurry. We don't have to be perfect. So let me, um, I'll, I'll skip a little bit because I, I know y'all are getting hungry. So uh, <laughs> we talk about evangelism, spreading the news to attract the, the world to Jesus. We must also talk about discipleship. And if we're going to talk about discipleship, we must also realize that we must first be disciples. And that means we must be disciplined. And so we look and we consider the cost of discipleship. And 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 says, But godliness, and, and I, listen, I, I'm going to say this. I, I'm a, at heart, I grew up in a business environment. My, my parents own a lot of businesses. And my heart is to make more money and all that. And I really, but, but I'm going to say this. Don't, when I was talking about that 
What's most important, family or money? You got to come to come to grips with that. I, you hear what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be rude. I just want you to say, I want you to understand. You've got to. You better come to grips with that. What is more important? And then you've got to know. Well, I can do both, but you got to be very aware of the cost. Okay, so I'm, I'm trying to go there. That's, that's my personal thoughts. Godliness with contentment is great gain. 1 Timothy 6 and 6. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. My dad, we buried my dad a couple of months ago, and I think he, I, I can't remember if he had his glasses on or not, but it uh, seems like there was something else in the gasket. I can't remember what it was, but well, besides a suit. <laughs> I mean, but... Did it really go anywhere? No, it's still sitting out at St. Trest, about six feet under. Because he come in with nothing, and he's leaving with nothing. And each and every one of us are doing the same thing. And, and Scripture goes on and says in verse 8, And having food and raiment, let us be therefore, or therewith, content. Content. One of the things that our world is struggling with is the lack of contentment. We can't just say, ah, oh, this is awesome. Everything I've got is, my, my wife's taught me a song. Baby, can you come up here and help me sing? She's like, what? Come on, baby, I need you to help. You don't want to help me? What's that song? You remember that song you taught me? Back when I wasn't really living for God? Wasn't the yellow bird with the yellow bill. It was the one that said, oh, be thankful for the good things that you've got. Oh, be thankful for the good things that you've got. For many, it's just a dream. Just a dream. So be thankful for the good things that you've got. Why complain? I forgot all the words. I'll stop. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> why complain? Why? Why be greedy? Why? I want you to measure. This is not me preaching to you so I can get everybody straightened out. This is, I want this message to get in your heart. What motivates you? And is it drawing you away from the relationship that you need with God that you can be the disciple that you need to be? Is, is, and and I'm, again, I'm, gonna, I'm referring to myself. I'm a, you can ask my wife. I'm a greedy, prideful man, naturally. I'm a naturally greedy, prideful man. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God for a wife. <laughs> <laughs> can straighten me out, amen. Thank God that, that, I, that I have another day to say, Lord, let me kill this old man. Right. Not let, literally <laughs> kill me, but let me kill that old desire and that old, that old, that old, right. I, I, I don't want to be like that. I want to be a man that is, that is content with everything I've got. Right. So I've got to make my, I've got to, and I, I know if you're in a home that, that people don't agree, that you struggle. It's like a tug of war between, well, what's going to be most important? Well, contentment, no, we need a bigger house. Oh, no, contentment, no, we need a bigger car. And it goes back and forth. And, and sometimes it's not just the husband and the wife, but it's, it's us individually. Right. Amen. Like, man, my car's got 200, I looked at it today, 230,000 miles on it. Sure would be nice to have one of those new Prius Prams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, Prius the CC car, but anyway. <laughs> but they, <laughs> I'm stopping, okay, I've got like four more pay. I will tell you one more thing, it's very important actually, very important. But they that will be rich, they that will be rich, fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love, I thought this, God showed me this the other day, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And we, we know that. While, uh, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Now, quickly, this is the last thing, a lost thought type thing I'm going to have. Uh, a guy by the name of Mayor Amschel Bauer Rothschild stated, he said this back, uh, I think it's 1880 something, I don't remember exactly. Give me control of a nation's money and I care not who makes their laws. That's what he said. Give me control of their money, and I don't care who makes their laws. What was he saying and why? He said that because he knows the natural tendencies 
of ungodly people. We're more motivated by our possessions than we are anything else. Now, it's not just an individual's greed that he's talking about. He's talking about the whole nation. We now, and I, I'm not getting in the end time, but we now see that happening on a global, a global experiment they're working on. In church, I believe with all of my heart that we better make up our mind. We better make up our mind. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. You want to follow me? You might not have what everybody else has. You want to follow me? Well, I'll, let, me go, let, me, let me go bury my daddy. Hmm. It's not worth the time away. You need to stay as close to me as you can. You, need to stay, you, don't, you don't need to go anywhere. You need to stay right here with me. That, that's what he's saying. Let me, go, let me go say bye to my family. You know what? You might, not be, you might not be a good fit for this because your family's probably not going to agree with your choices. I believe that, that uh, and, and I'm, I'm, I really need to close, but I believe that we need to personally um, assess ourselves, look at ourselves. I'm so thankful I, I'm, I see people in the church here, and I'm not, I, I'm thankful, by the way, <laughs> I don't want to shoot a, shoot a good thing, but uh, I'm thankful for those that have jobs and businesses that, that you know, give a lot to the church. I'm like, yes, praise the Lord, brother. You keep that business going. But I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you now, you got to be careful. It's not always going to be the way it is today. And while you're doing all this struggling and weighing it all out, and be careful that you don't become a slave, a slave, a slave to the lender. Don't become a slave to the lender. Be disciplined. Don't, but don't, don't get just going off your emotions. I, I, I talk to people, I counsel people all the time that have problems. And over half of them, their problems come because they are making choices based on emotion. And they're not willing to look in the mirror and say, I need to kind of be content with what I've got. I need to settle down and make some good decisions and just stick with it. God help us. Let's stand. Lord, help us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to repeat um, again tonight, and I'm going to be doing this a lot over the next couple of months. If you know of anybody that would be willing to sponsor our safe churches, please come and get one of these, take it to them. And their website is on there. Um, actually, it's not, but it is on there in a way. It shows the email. But um, we want you to pr promote this. We want to make the church as pure as it can be on this earth. We need your help. We want to reach souls for the kingdom of God. Not for my glory. Not so we can toot our horn and put, our, put all, everything we did on Facebook. That's not what it's about. We want to give God glory. Okay? Amen. Let's ask God to help us. Lord, we worship you and honor you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the word that challenges us. Lord, I pray that you would help us individually, Lord God, help every one of us to, to realize our weaknesses and to recognize the importance that we discipline our lives, to line our lives up with you and your word, to be ready to pay whatever price it is, to, to follow you and to do your will, Lord Jesus. Lord, to do your will, Lord Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, I feel the Spirit of God working today. I, I mean that. I feel the Lord working right now. Lord, I pray, help us today, Jesus. Help us today. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I will, I will say this. The Scripture uses the phrase, take up your cross and follow me. Well, I don't think a lot of people realize what that cross, what that means. I don't think they realize that the sac that cross is, is bloody, it's heavy, and it ends in a death. And that death is a spiritual death for us. We die to ourselves, we die to our past, Amen. and we follow him.
And I'm going to encourage you. I'm not, I, again, I, I love everybody. I'm not here to hurt anybody. But I'm going to encourage you to check yourself in the spiritual mirror in your prayer and say, Lord, help me to be aware of what, how my, my value system, if you will. Help me to be aware of the, deci- the dis- discipline. I get, keep getting them mixed up. The discipline that I'm supposed to, I need to be putting in my life. Help me, Lord. Because if you don't check, if you don't check, you'll be like that man. And this is scripture too. He looks in the mirror and walks away and forgets what kind of person he is. You better be careful. I want to be careful. I'm, I'm trying to be careful. I'm trying. I mean that. God bless you. Hey, we're one minute early. Whoa, get out of here. In Jesus' name, love somebody.